So this lesson is on lesson two for rate of change. And I wasn't in class on Wednesday and I'm not going to be in class on Thursday and Friday because of uh, SAT testing information. So I'm going to try to do this video for lesson two four so to help you with your homework. Um, like we started in lesson two four, we were talking about the rate of change, the average rate of change. And they're both the same thing. So when you're finding the average rate of change um, of a particular function over a certain interval, we talked about this on Monday, but we didn't get to finish. And I was hoping we finished on Wednesday. But again, I was uh, SAT test prepping. So... Average rate of change is the same as the slope we might find it a little differently in in calculus but it's the same as uh, we found the slope in algebra one um, so Example one on page 87 in your textbook, it says find the average rate of change of f of x. equals x to the third minus x over the interval one and three. So that's an interval. That's not an ordered pair. That's an interval. So like I said on Monday in class, um, I made a This would be x1 and x2. So I made up f of x sub 1 minus f of, I'm sorry, f of x sub 2 minus f of x sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x of one. And f of just simply means plug the number into the function, whereas in the numerator, whereas the denominator is just the interval. So x sub two is f of three. So that means plug three into this function minus f of 1, which is x of 1. So plug 1 into this function all over x of 2, which is 3, minus x of 1, which is 1. So I can't just subtract f of 3 minus f of 1. I have to plug these numbers into the function to get this. Uh, this means what is the function when x is 3? And this means what is the function when x is 1? So you do that off to the side um, or below somewhere. So the function is f of x equals x to the third minus x. And we want, we want to find f of 3 and f of 1.
So f of 3 is everywhere I see an x, I'm going to put a 3. And then f of 1, everywhere I see an x, I'm going to put a 1. And now f of 3 is 24. So I'm going to take this 24 and put it here because we just solved it. So f of 3 is 24. f of 1, we plugged 1 in and got 0. So I'm going to put it here in the formula. And then 3 minus 1 is 2. And then 24 divided by 2 equals 12. And so the average rate of change for this function over this interval is 12. So the slope is 12. That means you rise 12, run 1, right? Okay. So then I had you do uh, problems 2, 4, and 6 on page uh, 92. And I think for the most part, um, everybody got it. Uh, I'll do 2. And we'll move on from there. So problem two, page 92. All right, so the function is f of x equals the square root of 4x minus. I'm sorry, plus one. And the interval, they got two intervals where A is zero and two, and B is 10 and 12. So, uh, again, the formula says take f of my second x, subtract it from f of my first x, all over my second x minus my first x. So we have f of zero, I'm sorry. My second x is 2. Label it if you need to. So we have f of 2 minus f of 0 over 2 minus 0. Um, So then again, we need to plug 2 into our function so that we can place f of 2 here. And then we need to plug 0 into our function and so we can plug f of 0 here. All right. So... Our function is f of x equals the square root of 4x plus 1. So we want f of 2. So this is 4 times 2 plus 1. This, so this is the square root of 8 plus 1, which is the square root of 9, which is 3. So f of 2, when x is 2, y is 3.
So I'm going to come back up here. When x is 2, we found that y would be 3. So f of 2 is 3 minus. And then we need to do move this up a little bit. So then we need to do f of 0. So the square root of 4 times 0 plus 1. f of 0 is the square root of 0 plus 1. f of 0 is the square root of 1, which equals 1. So when x is 0, y, remember this is function notation, so y equals 1. And then you finish this off. This is 2 over 2, which equals 1. And the section is solved. So, so this function, the slope or the average rate of change is 1 when over the interval 0, 2. So we do the same thing for 10 and 12. Um, we want f of our second x minus f of our first x divided by our second x minus our first x. So this is f of 12 minus f of 10 divided by 12 minus 10. All right, and then again, you got to plug in 12 into this function. So f of x equals 4x plus 1. We want f of 12. So this is 4 times 12 plus 1. So f of 12 is 48 plus 1. f of 12 is the square root of 49, which is 7. And then, so f of 12, when x is 12, y, which is f of 12, is 7 minus. So then you have to do f of 10. 4 times 10 plus 1. So f of 10 equals 40 plus 1. And the book leaves it as the square root of 41. And you can leave it as the square root of 41 also, or round. But remember, we talked about rounding. You don't want to round here because you have to go back and round here. So that's rounding twice in a problem, and you don't want to do that. So I'm going to leave this as the square root of 41 divided by 2. So this would be an exact answer. And then you would do 7 minus the square root of 41 first, divide that by 2, then round. But if you round here, and then you come up here and round here, you may round too tough and get the wrong answer. Okay, if you have any questions about this, let me know. But this should help you with Problems 1, 3, and 5. Now 5, 
uh, since it has a trigonometric function, um, you might have to use an equivalent in order to solve it. But again, if you have any questions about these types of problems, let me know. So now we're going to move on um, when you're given. So I'm going to skip back to page um, 87. Go back to page 87. And they want you to compute the average rate of change and the slope of the secant line. So again, the average rate of change is the same as the slope. So let's continue with that. The average rate of change. is the same as slope. And now I'm going to add and the slope of the secant line. So they're just adding definitions and words and stuff, but you're, you're finding it the same way depending on the information that you're given. So like in the first two problems that we did, we were given a function and an interval. So we had to find it a certain way. So here, we're going to be given two points. And we all know and love two points because that is the slope, our regular slope formula we learned in Algebra 1. So... This is example two on page 87, and it says use P, which is 23 and 150, and Q, which is 45 and 340. And it says, compute the average rate of change and the slope of the secant line. And again, the average rate of change is the same thing as the slope of the secant line. Uh, except that, let me look. Yep, they're the same. So it's just wording. Um, just like in uh, lesson 1-1 one, one, when it said uh, find the general equation and general equation with standard form. So it's just wording. You just got to be comfortable with both. All right, so we got two points and you find the average rate of change, which is the slope, which is the slope of the secant line. The exact same way. Uh, and so we have three forty minus one fifty over. 45 minus 23. So we have uh, 190 over 22. And average rate of change is usually, usually have units, um, but this is not a unit number. Uh, unit number is out of one. So the book uses the approximation symbol and says it's 8.6 and it has units. Uh, and they were looking at flies. So we will put flies per day. So average rate of change is usually out of one. Um, what is going on in one minute, one day, one hour? So that's why we had to divide 190 divided by 22. Okay. 
Um, the problem similar to this is on page 92 and You're supposed to do number seven for your homework. Um, and what I want to do right now is if you look at number seven on page 92, the points are like in between numbers. So they're a little bit ambiguous. And so if we don't pinpoint these points, uh, everybody's going to get a different answer. So what I want to do now is um, for number seven, uh, which is a part of your homework, um, we're going to, I'm just going to tell you uh, what the book has for each point. Um, P is 20 and 650. And they want you to find PQ1. So here we found PQ because there was only one point for the quote-unquote flies. Um, the P in this instance was um, our starting point. And they wanted to know, well, what did the flies increased to what was the slope of what the flies increased to. So here P is our um, ending point and they want to know well what is the slope of the acceleration of a 1994 Ford Mustang. So they want you to find PQ1, PQ2, PQ3, and PQ4. And again, the points are in between numbers. So if I don't give you what the book has for each point, everybody's going to have a different um, slope. So they want P to be 20 and 650. And Q1... They use 10 and 225. Q2. They use 14 and 375. Q3. 16.5, which some of you might have caught that, but. It's okay. We're just going to work it through. So 16.5 and 475. And then Q4 is 